Hello and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Ryan Goodman and I'm excited today to share with you uh, something that I've been looking forward to for years now and that's the ability for us to embed content, uh, specifically maps, inside of Web Intelligence. So the latest version of Webby for BI 4.1 uh, Service Pack 2 and beyond uh, has a new functionality called extension points and what that allows us to do is to take content, HTML content, dashboard content, really whatever we want, and embed that inside of this little side pane. So my team took the ability uh, of this new extension points, and we've sought out to make mapping embeddable inside of Webby, and then allow that map to then be controlled by the Web Intelligence document. And then as things move forward or progress forward, we'll then have the ability to use the map to control the Webby doc. So before we get ahead of ourselves, what I wanted to focus my energy on today was kind of going into the depths of what it takes to get to this point, right? What is the process and steps required to create a object embedded inside of our extension point and then push this out to your end users? So before I back up a few steps, let's see what the end result looks like. So this is a dashboard. It's feeding or getting data directly from Webby. If we were to go in and enter filters or, or drill, basically what's happening is as I change the content within my main Webby window here, it is uh, automatically passing the data down into the, the, uh, the dashboard object that contains my map. So if I were to go and use a filter and bring up Colorado, for example, the dashboard will uh, instantly display Colorado. Or if I wanted to show Kentucky, um, now we've got two records in Kentucky. We can go in, zoom in, and obviously see those two records, so Lexington and Louisville. This is certainly a great start to something awesome, I think. And uh, once more, what we're granting is not just the ability to embed maps, but to embed an entire dashboard object. So if I want to take advantage of other capabilities outside of the core map, uh, we have a lot of latitude to really create the optimal experience for mapping all contained within this nice uh, extension point. So now let me back up. Let's talk about how we get to this point. So the first thing that you have to do is actually install the extension point. So we have our own CMAPS Analytics extension point. The way that this works is that you have to de deploy a jar file onto your business object server. Now, now we have detailed install instructions of how to deploy this to your business objects application server. We're not gonna go through that deep, but what we wanted to do was assuming that you have our extension point installed, I wanted to show you how to enable it for use in web intelligence. So you're actually gonna to go to users and groups. You pick out the group that you want to enable this for. You go to properties, then you go to customization. You get extensions and then you can enable whatever extensions you have installed. So this is a quick and easy way to assign rights to use the CMAPS Analytics extension point with your Webby reports and be able to choose which specific users will get to use this extension. So that covers how to enable the extension. Now once you do that, instantly this extension will be available. Now the next step that we have to go through um, is twofold. First, we actually need to decide what kind of content we're going to marry up with our Webby doc, and I'll, I'll cover that in a second. And then after you do that, we then need to define how the extension will load up our content. Because the beauty of using a dashboard as the container is that, one, you have complete flexibility to do whatever you want, but also every Webby document presumably could have a different type of map, a different type of experience. First, let's go in and see what's required to actually configure this. So if I flip over to my desktop development machine, what I have here is a really simple model that I've pre-configured with, uh, with a layer of data here. And this layer of data uh, has its own addresses, labels, values, data selection, uh, and, and some other properties. Furthermore, we've also enabled dynamic icon sizing and we've also turned on alerts so that based on the data, I can establish thresholds for when the data or when the points will change color, shape, size, etc. So with that configured, I need to tell this dashboard object how it's going to get the data from Webby. 
So what we've done is we've created our own uh, external interface. So you go to add an external interface. And we have a couple of external interfaces. The one that we'll focus on today is just to get the report data. So we have an external interface that's called get report data. Now this, is, this particular external interface assumes that you only have one report part that you're gonna consume. In other Tech Tuesdays and other documentation, we'll explain how to get a little bit more detailed and pick out specific report parts to load into your dashboard. But for this scenario, let's assume that we're gonna have one report part in our report that we want to interface with the map. So you have get report data, the range type is going to be table. Uh, you establish your range, which is going to have the same number of columns as your Webby report part. And then you set access to read and write. Basically, that's all that you have to do to configure your dashboard to consume data directly from Webby. Our extension point handles the rest. So now with this dashboard configured, we can save this directly to our business objects repository. So we save this to platform as desktop and mobile. We go ahead and we log into our repository. We'll give it a second here. Um, it'll provide me with a list of directories where we want to stick this file. There we go. So let's say we want to stick this file here. We'll call this our standard web template number two. So what it's going to do is uh, generate a Swift file um, and it will technically generate the HTML5 mobile version of this dashboard. So you can see it's generating the mobile dashboard. Now, the current version, we're using the Flash. So we do certainly support both uh, Flash and HTML5 versions of this same exact map. That's for another webinar. So now we have our content in the Business Objects repository. We'll flip back to Business Objects. We're going to go into Design Mode and we'll just use this report here. We'll select our objects and there's one very important variable that we have to create. It's called the Swift doc ID. And so once again, this is a variable that our extension point is automatically looking for. And the way it works is that we need to feed it the ID for our dashboard. Now, how do we get this ID? Basically, if you go into your documents, if we go and locate uh, our, uh, our dashboard here, so let's go, we'll find the dashboard object that I just created. So standard web template two. I can go to my properties, snag the ID. Now I can go right back into my web intelligence report, modify, we can go and we can modify our ID, select OK. And what will happen now is when we launch this extension point, what it's going to do is go into the repository, grab that dashboard, bring it on into the uh, this frame here, and then whatever is inside the report, it's going to start loading that content right into the dashboard. Pretty simple yet powerful functionality. So. Basically, what we've done is we've brought together the best of both worlds. We've brought together dashboards so that you have complete control over the experience and made it so that the dashboard content can directly consume data out of web intelligence. Now, now comes the questions of what we do or don't support. What we've done is essentially kind of drawn our line in the sand for what type of applications and what kind of scenarios we want to support on day one. So what this integration is geared towards is organizations who build web intelligence reports professionally and then distribute those to business users who are interfacing with the reports inside of a browser or potentially inside of rich client. So this particular extension point will work in the HTML or DHTML browser or in rich client. Where it will not work is inside of other distribution mechanisms like PDF um, or other bursting tools because you do require this side pane for the extension to operate. Um, the other question that we always get is the ability to replace or hide the report, uh, the report part. So in other words, if I create this report part right here, can I make the map replace the report part? The answer is no, not, 
not at this point because extension points at this stage is used to be uh, inside of this side pane right here, which does provide some benefits so that as you're interfacing with the map and the report, you're not having to constantly refresh that map and start from scratch. So there are some benefits there. Uh, the other question that we get around mobility, so can I then publish this experience to mobile? Uh, the answer is no. So SAP has their own mobile web intelligence viewer inside of their mobile app. So you are kind of contained uh, into the webby uh, HTML viewer. Now, if you happen to grant access to this on your iPad where you get the full webby experience, it would technically work, though we know that a few, if any, customers are actually doing that. Uh, the other question has to do with uh, direct integration. Uh, we had some customers inquire about, you know, why are we using the Flash controller? Why not use HTML5? Why not build a direct integration? All of that stuff is coming in good time. Uh, we found that this would be a great entry point specifically for our hundreds of customers who are already using CMAPS analytics and customers who are investigating using our tool. So what you get is, is a lot of flexibility. That does introduce a little bit more work up front, but that's, you know, that's the, the, the nature of the beast at this uh, point in time. Finally, another question that we get has to do with the interactivity between the report and the extension point. So if you were to go to the SAP website and look at the extension point SDK documentation, you'll see that there's actually quite a few things that you can do to enable interactivity between the map, or I should say the, the container, the extension, and the rest of the report. Uh, so one of the things that we're working on right now is making it so that the map can execute prompts. So if you wanted to, for instance, use uh, the selection of a state or the selection of a location to prompt and return additional data, uh, you have the ability certainly to do that. And that's something that we're going to bring to the table in the, uh, the second revision of our extension point. Uh, finally, the, the last question is, OK, well, how do I get my hands on this? Right? This is exciting. I want to put this in front of my users. When is this going to be available? Uh, this particular extension point will be made available to all of our existing CMAPS Analytics customers. Uh, certainly, you need to be running a, a BI 4.1 Service Pack 2 or higher to be able to use this. Um, for any of you out there who are looking at this saying, oh, this is exactly what my end users need, uh, just contact us. We can work with you to get you a copy of this. Uh, certainly, you can use extension points with the trial version of our tool. Um, and then the last question that customers have asked us or potential customers have asked us is what what am I looking at right what a, what's the licensing or additional cost to gain the ability to publish my content to Webby well so that's the beauty of of our subscription if you're a CMAPS analytics subscriber you instantly get access to this there's no additional licensing there's no additional fees you instantly just get the ability to publish content from our existing CMAPS analytics directly into web intelligence. And so we're really excited about the possibilities and some of the new ideas uh, that our customers are coming up with already and how we can service those needs to transform CMAPS analytics from a dashboard component into a full-blown location analytics tool pervasive across all of the business objects tools. So lots more to come in upcoming weeks where we'll get to see CMAPS analytics inside of other business objects tools. So stay tuned for more. Thank you again for joining us for today's Tech Tuesday. Have a great day.